For millennia, we believed Earth was the center of everything. We saw the sun, moon, and stars revolve around us. This was the geocentric model. It felt right. It was intuitive. It placed us at the center of creation. Then came Nicholas Copernicus, a Polish astronomer with a revolutionary idea. He proposed that the Earth was not the center. The sun was. It was a radical shift. The Earth, he said, was just another planet revolving around the sun. This is the story of that revolution. The story of how Copernicus changed our understanding of the universe. It's a story of observation, deduction and courage. A story of how science challenges us to see the world anew. Copernicus's story reminds us that our place in the universe is not preordained. It's a story of discovery. A story of how we continue to learn and evolve our understanding of the cosmos. Amid the celestial dance, ancient astronomers encountered a puzzling phenomenon, retrograde motion. Planets, which usually moved steadily across the sky, would sometimes slow down, stop and even reverse direction before resuming their usual path. This baffling behavior seemed to defy the geocentric model. To explain this, early astronomers devised complex theories. They proposed epicycles, small circular orbits within larger orbits, to account for the planet's apparent backward motion. While these epicycles could predict planetary positions with some accuracy, they added layers of complexity to the geocentric model. Pause 2S. Then came Copernicus. His heliocentric model offered a simpler explanation. In this model, retrograde motion was an optical illusion resulting from the relative positions and motions of Earth and the other planets as they orbited the Sun. When Earth, moving faster on its inner orbit, overtook an outer planet, that planet appeared to move backward against the backdrop of stars. This elegant solution not only simplified our understanding of planetary motion, but also strengthened the case for a Sun-centered universe. The mystery of retrograde motion was no longer a celestial enigma, but a natural consequence of our planetary system's true structure. With this newfound clarity, the stage was set for a deeper exploration of the cosmos. Copernicus' model was just the beginning of a transformative journey that would redefine our place in the universe. Ancient civilizations looked to the sky with awe and wonder. They saw patterns in the stars, they observed the movements of the sun and moon, they created stories to explain these celestial wonders. Many cultures developed geocentric models. The Earth was the center of everything. The sun, moon, and stars were divine beings that circled our world. These models were often intertwined with mythology and religion. These early models were attempts to make sense of the universe. They reflected the limited knowledge and technology of the time. They were also a testament to human curiosity and our desire to understand our place in the cosmos. In the 2nd century AD, the Greek astronomer Ptolemy refined the geocentric model. His system was more complex and mathematically sophisticated. It attempted to explain the observed motions of the planets. Ptolemy's model placed the Earth at the center. Around it were a series of concentric spheres. The sun, moon and planets were embedded on these spheres. They revolved around the Earth in complex patterns. Ptolemy's model was widely accepted for centuries. It fit with the prevailing philosophical and religious views. However, it had its flaws. It required complex adjustments to account for the observed motions of the planets. It was a system that worked, but not perfectly. Nicholas Copernicus was born in Poland in 1473. He was a Renaissance man. He studied mathematics, astronomy, medicine and law. He was also a canon in the Catholic Church. Copernicus was troubled by the complexities of Ptolemy's model. He felt there had to be a simpler, more elegant explanation for the motions of the planets. He began to explore alternative ideas. Copernicus was influenced by ancient Greek thinkers who had proposed heliocentric models. He began to develop his own heliocentric theory based on his observations and calculations. He proposed that the Sun, not the Earth, was the center of the solar system. How about Sun at center, the heliocentric model, Sun at the center? Copernicus's heliocentric model placed the Sun at the center of the solar system. The Earth and other planets revolved around the Sun in circular orbits, while the Moon revolved around the Earth. This model elegantly explained the observed motions of the planets. It did away with the complex adjustments required by Ptolemy's model. It also explained why certain planets appeared to move backward in the sky at times, a phenomenon known as retrograde motion. Copernicus's model 
was a radical departure from the prevailing view. It challenged the established order and it was a testament to his courage and intellectual independence. Proof in the pudding, evidence and observation. Copernicus's model was based on observation and mathematical reasoning. He carefully studied the positions of the planets over time, using this data to support his heliocentric theory. However, Copernicus lacked the tools to definitively prove his model. He didn't have telescopes or other advanced instruments, so he had to rely on naked eye observations and mathematical calculations. Despite the limitations, Copernicus's model offered a simpler and more elegant explanation for the motions of the planets. It was a model that, while not perfect, provided a more accurate representation of the solar system. Reactions and resistance, a controversial idea. Copernicus hesitated to publish his heliocentric theory, knowing well it would stir controversy. It boldly challenged the prevailing scientific and religious views and directly contradicted the teachings of the Catholic Church. When Copernicus finally released his book, De Revolutionibus Orbium Coelestium, in 1543, the reactions were mixed. Some astronomers found his ideas intriguing, while others dismissed them as absurd. Initially, the Catholic Church did not condemn the theory. However, as the heliocentric model gained traction, it began to be seen as a direct threat to the Church's authority. Galileo's contributions, strengthening the heliocentric model. In the early 1600s, the Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei propelled the acceptance of the heliocentric model forward with his significant contributions. Utilizing the newly invented telescope, Galileo made groundbreaking observations. He observed the phases of Venus, which could only be explained if Venus orbited the Sun, not the Earth. He also observed the four largest moons of Jupiter, demonstrating that not everything revolved around the Earth. These observations provided strong evidence in support of Copernicus's theory and helped to solidify the heliocentric model as the accepted view of the solar system, the ever-evolving universe beyond Copernicus. Copernicus's model was a major step forward in our understanding of the universe, yet it was not the final word. Later astronomers like Johannes Kepler refined Copernicus's model showing that planets move in elliptical orbits, not perfect circles. Isaac Newton's laws of motion and universal gravitation provided the theoretical framework to explain the motions of the planets. Our understanding of the universe has continued to evolve. We now know that our solar system is just one of billions in the Milky Way galaxy and the Milky Way is just one of countless galaxies in the vast expanse of the universe. Imagine if Copernicus was completely right. What if Copernicus's original model was completely accurate? Imagine a universe where the planets moved in perfect circles around the sun. No ellipses, no wobbles, just perfect harmonious circles. Would this change our understanding of the laws of physics? Would it simplify our calculations of planetary motion? Would it make the universe seem even more elegant and orderly? Perhaps a perfectly circular solar system would have a different kind of beauty.